So the suggestion that she decided who got which portfolio is simply not supported by the evidence. Okay. What you do have is, yes, a person here trying very hard to get something for somebody. She has no success. She never gets through to anybody. She's stymied by journalists who string her along, get all the information they want out of her. The second point that a corporate lobbyist, as you put it, wants to be involved in what's happening in the ministries. Is that a valid news story? I think it's an important it's an important insight. But I am not a daily news reporter, right? I don't go and write things every day. I don't go on television in the evening and tell you what I have learned. Yes, I certainly filed it away. I certainly filed away the fact that she had a problem with Maran. I certainly filed away the fact that she was close to Kanimori. If there had been the slightest suggestion Afterwards, if Kanimori had got a portfolio and had favoured the Tatas, I would have written about it. If anything with Maran the Tata that happened, I would certainly have mentioned this conversation. As it turned out, because you referred to Raja, the Tata seemed to have got the worst deal from Raja. So what was I going to say? Okay, I also want to, before I ask you one question on whether you're apologetic to people, I also want to throw it open to other panelists. But before that, would you like to apologize for what happened? Are you sorry for what happened? And to everyone watching tonight, would you like to make an unconditional apology and say there are lessons that you've learned and you're terribly sorry because you believe in some senses you've brought down the perception that people have of journalists? I think that's putting words in my mouth, Rahul. I don't actually need to say all of that, but yes. I mean, if you're going to say, am I going to stand here and say, hey, don't worry, I did fine. I don't know what you guys are complaining about. Of course, I'm not taking that position. I said at the beginning and I will say again, wherever I am today, where you are, today and where you will be tomorrow. We are ultimately nothing. We are the creations of the people who trust us, the people who believe in us, the people who read us. If there is any sense in which the people out there feel that I have let them down, if there's any sense in which they feel having heard these tapes, having whatever, there are doubts about me, I have tried my best to provide explanations. I can tell you that my conscience is clear. I strung somebody along. I look took one input for a piece, but I wrote a completely fair piece. But despite all of that, ultimately, it's not my opinion that matters. It's the opinion of the people out there. If they believe that in some way I've let them down, of course I'm going to say sorry. I'm not so high and mighty or so arrogant who's going to say, listen, I read what was right. What do you guys know? Of course, these guys know everything. Ultimately, public sub jaanta hai na? It's these people, it's their perceptions, their views of me that matter. I'm very, very sorry to the extent that people's perceptions of me have changed. I hope to God people will not judge me on the basis of a few tapes leaked deliberately, changed, doctored, deleted, little quote from those tapes read in isolation. I hope they will go and read the journalism. They will see that the journalism is completely fair. And I hope they will go back. I've been a journalist, what, 30 years? I hope they will go back and see that. I don't think I've ever been involved in any controversy like this. I don't think people should be just necessarily in isolation. But to your larger issue, are there ethical issues involved? Yes, I think there's an ethicality in how journalists deal with their sources. When you have your discussion right after this, right after you finish tearing me to shreds, you can maybe discuss that issue. And as for myself, yes, of course, I'm, I regret very much what happened. I wish to God this had never happened. If I could do it all again, I would obviously do it very differently. I had no idea when I was talking to a source that the process of massaging a source would be secretly tape recorded, that a doctored version would be leased to the public, that the public would see this and instead of judging my journalism would be reduced to judging the way in which I massage the source. I'm terribly sorry to people who that's let down and I hope to God we can get on with this. Okay, you've taken on some very tough questions. You've made your point. And you've also now really set the stage for the larger debate on media ethics. Mr. Veer Sangvi, for joining us from Bangkok. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much.